Hello and welcome. My name is Kelly. I'm the owner of Dog Kind Training. We specialize in helping very fearful dogs build confidence. If you have a dog who is frequently distracted or just really disengaged when it comes to training, maybe they don't want to eat your treats, then this video series is for you. In this series, we are talking about why sensitive dogs might look like they are distracted or being stubborn or just not food motivated and some changes we can make to the training setup that might help with that. Distracted during training, what to do. This is part two this week. A little review. Who is this for? This is for you if you feel stuck in your training with your fearful dog and they often seem distracted, disengaged, or like they're being stubborn and your dog doesn't seem very food motivated. Often when a dog looks distracted, they may actually be anxious. And signs of this can be hesitation to respond to cues or refusal to do something that you think your dog knows how to do, hesitation to eat treats or inconsistently eating treats, turning their head to look away from you, like the dog in this photo to the right, engaging in other activities in the middle of a training session, like sniffing or scratching themselves or wandering away, these all can be attempts by your dog to delay or escape the training session because they find something about it unpleasant or scary. So if this sounds familiar, what should you do? If you have a sensitive, anxious, or fearful dog, I would assume that anxiety or discomfort could be the cause of these troublesome training sessions where you can't get your dog to focus on you. I recommend taking video of training sessions if you're struggling and make sure that you, your dog, and the surrounding environment are all in the frame and look for clues in the recording. It's much easier to see in a recording than in real time. Look for anything that precedes one of these sort of disengagement behaviors or distracted looking behaviors in the video and see if you can find anything you could try to change. If any of these behaviors are new to your dog or you think there is a possibility your dog could be having some kind of pain, get them evaluated by a vet. Otherwise, it will be pretty hard to make progress in training if they're hurting. Once you have your training video, create a list of potential problems if you can identify anything from that video. And if you can't, you're just not sure where to start trying to improve your training sessions, that's what these videos are for. We're gonna try changing one thing at a time. In the last video, part one, I talked about some changes you could try to make to the physical context of training. And this week we're gonna talk about changes you can make to yourself, to your body position and how you are sort of interacting with your dog. So first thing to try, if your dog is pretty sensitive, is giving more space in the context of training. So back away from your dog or if you are trying to get your dog to approach an object or a piece of equipment or something, back yourself away from that. That's another way of giving space that can be helpful. You can change your own behavior so there's less quote unquote attention on your dog. Of course, you do have to pay attention to your dog when you're training, but if you can turn your body away and your face, avert your gaze a little bit, have your face turned away a bit from your dog, for many dogs that seems to help them feel uh, better about the training session. Avoid staring at them or leaning in toward them. You can also try being smaller, so sitting down instead of standing up, and also being on the dog's level. So for instance, sitting on the floor, if the dog is on the floor, or sitting on the sofa with the dog on the sofa, sometimes for some dogs that's easier than having you standing kind of above them. Let's look at some examples to, to really illustrate what I'm talking about here. I know a lot of you struggle with your dog taking food from you consistently. So what if your dog won't take food from you? What could you change about what you're doing to possibly increase the likelihood of them eating the food? One thing you can do is put the food down and leave, or at least move away and see if that helps. And if it does, that tells you that your proximity or something about what you're doing when you're in proximity might be the problem. For example, this video I showed a couple weeks ago with my dog Juno where I'm offering her the yogurt container and she looks away and you might say she's not food motivated or she doesn't like it, but when I put it down on the floor and move away, now she eats it. So she didn't like me being close and how I was presenting it. Let's say you're doing training with an item or object like a harness or a collar and you're trying to get your dog to say, 
approach the harness, nose target it, and your dog does not want to do it, or they're very inconsistent um, in their willingness to approach, one thing that sometimes can help is moving yourself farther away from that item. This is particularly true when dogs have a learning history of someone holding something becoming a predictor that bad stuff is now going to happen. So if they have been, for instance, harnessed in the past in a way that they found really uncomfortable, if they see someone holding a harness or even a harness close to a person, they may not be willing to approach. And so you might have to step farther back in training. And here's how that might look. Uh, this is Juno, my dog Juno again. And I'm showing how I might start with targeting a new harness on the floor, but like a few feet from me instead of having it right in front of me. I'm also not facing her, which also may help. And I'm tossing a treat away and then she can come back, sniff the harness, I say yes, and throw a treat away again. I know some of you are working on teaching your dog to walk with you in preparation for going for walks, or maybe you're already going for walks, but you're still struggling to get your dog to walk alongside you or sort of move with you. If that's the case, sometimes when you're doing training, walking slightly in front of your dog rather than asking them to walk right next to you can be easier for them, at least early on when you're teaching your dog to move with you. Here's an example from one of my clients. This is little Piper who you saw a couple sessions ago. I'm sorry, the video is a little grainy. This is a recording of a Zoom session and it's zoomed in. But what Piper is learning to do here is to walk between these little lids on the ground and eat from them. And the goal is to have her walking along with her mom. But you'll see some hesitation right here. Her mom is sideways to her, probably looking at her. So this hesitation tells me hmm, something is going on that she doesn't like. But now when mom gives her a little more space, now she's willing to walk to that lid and get the treat. So there's an example where that ad an adjustment of giving more space can help. And here's another example where she, the next behavior we're hoping for is to walk to the next lid for the treat. Her mom turns to face her and now you see a little opt out kind of behavior. She just sits down. She's willing to come get the next treat when it's put down, but then she'll turn away and wander away from the training session. And so what, how can we overcome this kind of opting out? Here we have a later training session where mom is staying more in front of Piper and keeping her back to Piper instead of facing her and making sure she's, she keeps moving so she's continuing to give Piper space and staying in front of her. And with this setup, um, Piper was pretty consistently eating each treat right away and then moving to the next treat. And finally, you might have a dog who is unwilling to approach or inconsistently approaches you, maybe a little looks a little uncomfortable approaching you. And one thing that you can try in this case is to change your body orientation and also be smaller as we talked about which can mean sitting down. So one last video example. So here is a little foster dog. That's the light colored dog. The other dog is the resident dog. And you can see that the dog is a little worried and avoidant of the person when they're standing up and moving and she moves away. But when foster dad sits down, now we're feeling a little better. You're going to see some approach. And so foster dad is making himself smaller by sitting and is also sort of keeping attention on her low by keeping his body sideways to her and not staring at her. So if you're following along with this video series and are looking for things to try this week, this is what I'd recommend. Try giving more space to either between you and your dog, between you and some equipment you're working with, or possibly both, and see if that helps your dog be more comfortable and engaged in the training session. Work on paying less obvious attention to your dog. So turn your body a little bit away from your dog. Turn your head away from them. Don't lean in or stare at them. You can also see if making yourself smaller helps, possibly sitting on the floor or on a chair versus uh, standing up. I hope this helps and I'd, I'd love to hear if it does help you. Please do comment below where you're watching this video if you have any questions or comments. Next week, I will be back with another installment with suggestions of things to try to see if you can get your fearful dog more engaged in training. 
In the meantime, I'll be offering some free live mini workshops over Zoom later in August. This is August 2024, in case you're watching this video later. If you would like to get the notification and link to join those live, get on the list at dogkindtraining.com slash confidence. That'll put you on the wait list for the Confidence Building for Dogs class, and will also get you access to the live workshops at the time I'm doing them. All right, everybody, have a great week, and I'll see you next week.